Francois Cholet is a, a cognitive scientist, an AI researcher who works for Google. And he's uh, written a quite influential paper um, on intelligence and uh, defines it as uh, the ability to uh, generalize and to acquire new skills. And he is, uh, has developed a benchmark that um, is quite famous for not being easily solvable by the existing algorithms, despite being somewhat solvable by people. He argues it can be solved by small children, but uh, some of the tasks are quite tricky. But uh, there are, in some sense, IQ tests that look like pixelated graphics, and they, each of these tasks is new. And they are designed in such a way that you cannot solve them by memorization. You have to come up with new solutions. Of course, in principle, maybe you can come up with a way to train your system by overtrain on a space of similar problems and essentially solve it by memorization. But this is not how you should do it. Right? So you should do it in the same way as humans do it, if you do it properly. And, uh, Maybe the way to do it is that you need to have the system trained on physical interaction first by observing how balls, uh, balls interact when you bounce them off a wall. And uh, there are some tasks like this where you basically have some pixel uh, arrangement that makes sense when you interpret them as a ball bouncing off a wall. Mm -hmm. right? And when you transfer, translate this pixel array into a form that the LLM can access, then the LLM might not be able to make sense of it. Hmm. It's also what we observe in the video model that, for instance, the, uh, they don't generalize in the same way in terms of temporal stability as humans do. If you, for instance, in Sora, which famous video model that uh, was released uh, by OpenAI, you can, uh, d there is a video of a cat that is waking up its owner, and it's very beautiful. And the first two times that you look at this short loop, it looks very impressive and basically nothing wrong with it. And then you look more closely and you notice, oh my god, uh, the cat is, has two left front paws because it's basically touching the owner two times with a front paw. Oh. And it's, you don't notice this when you only look at adjacent frames because every pair of adjacent frames or triplet of frames looks fine. It's only over long time frames that you notice it's incoherent. Hmm. And it's uh, a result of how that thing is trained and produces the images, right? There must be a way to train it so it's stable over longer time frames before it has the same feature fidelity as this thing has, because it looks completely photorealistic. It's just this weirdness that you notice when you see it presents something that doesn't work in time. I was pretty amazed. I, I'm not very in touch with the AI developments, but I was looking at your Twitter I mentioned earlier before we spoke, and I was pretty amazed by some of the video models that you tweeted. Uh, it's pretty amazing what's happening right there. Right yeah, I, right I don't understand how somebody cannot want to play with them. It's so fascinating what's happening. It's really, it's really mind-blowing. I feel that at the moment there is some kind of exhaustion. People feel that there is a plateau. But I suspect that much of the plateau is caused by our inability to get excited anymore because so much has been happening in the last few years. So basically every week when I look, it's uh, tremendous what kind of progress is happening on so many fronts. And of course, there is going to be another thing. B these uh, advances are expensive. And the question is, at which point is this going to translate into revenue or not? Mm -hmm.